Accurate thinking is the habit of making decisions and forming opinions that are based on factual information and tangible evidence. <coughs> what do we got today when we turn on the TV, when we look at the internet, when we look at social media? It is always bad. You got the internet, the news, the National Enquirer, and of course, the Kartrashians. <laughs> Who watches the Kartrashians? Never mind, I don't even want to know. I got your number now. <laughs> Are you hooked on them? What have they done? Nothing. Negativity fills our minds every day. Make sure you know it's true. I'll give you a prime example. Did anybody see this? About two weeks ago, they had the Chicago Cubs game on. And maybe not because you're not because you're from here. You might not have saw it. But up in Illinois, they show and it was on national TV. They showed a ball went down and the one of the uh, coaches picked it up and went to throw it to this young kid. And it went under the bleachers and the man behind the kid got the ball and picked it up. Did anybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Wait, yeah, wait. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, that's what I'm... Thank you. I'm doing the show up here. You relax. <laughs> it was false. Thank you. But here's the deal. When they reported that, do you remember seeing that? When they reported that, that guy, he's a jerk. He needs to find a kid and give a ball to him. Da, da, da. So can, do you know the whole story? <coughs> Tell us. Kind of, I read an article about it, and the guy already had multiple, so he picked it up and then gave it back to the little boy. Yeah, what it, it. It, pretty much. What had happened is the guy that was sitting next to him in the bleachers came on, they interviewed him on TV, and he said, that's not how that whole thing went. He said that that kid in front of him, he had got a ball uh, two innings earlier, and he gave it to the kid. He got another ball an uh, inning earlier and gave it to another kid and got another ball and gave it to a third kid. This was the fourth ball. And he kept it. So everybody's going, what a jerk. He had no idea and no, didn't know what the hell the story was. And when they showed a picture of the kid, did you happen to see that he had two balls in his hands? One was the one the guy gave him two earnings earlier, and one was the Cubs gave him sign because they felt sorry for him because he didn't get a ball. He already had one. Make sure you know what's going on because today, gosh, they can trick us all over the place. Controlled attention is the habit of prioritizing your time and energy to stay focused on what's beneficial for you. You got to keep your mind on the things you want and off the things you don't want even when you're not at school. I'm telling you right now, and I see a lot of good eyes there as, as looking at me. Let me tell you something. If you follow these things today, you take and run with just a couple of them, I'm going to guarantee you 100% you're going to become successful. Because people are not doing this today. And I have an ulterior motive. When you guys become millionaires and you remember back to this day and Mr. Carter he was he was right I'm gonna buy him a new truck <laughs> so that's what I'm looking for so don't be forgetting me a positive and negative thought cannot occupy your mind at the same time concentration upon a single idea is the hallmark of success focusing on what you want having that goal always constantly moving towards it. Boy, another one. Can you see this? Enthusiasm for the team, self-discipline for the team, uh, controlled attention for the team, teamwork for the team. All these things apply, don't they? The habit of working together to accomplish a task or goal. Teamwork. Different from the Mastermind Alliance in this way. The Mastermind Alliance means everybody has to be on the same page, do the same thing. No ifs, ands, or buts. Teamwork, there can be a little bit of, of difference. Hey, what if we did this? This might work a little better that way. What if we make this happen? So teamwork is just a little bit different. You'll get that in that book. Communicate. Discuss the situation. When you're on a ball team, communication is very important. Coordinate, make a plan. What are you going to do? 
You're going to steal home. You're going to steal second base. You're going to bunt. And then work together to accomplish it. It's that simple. I wish somebody would have told me when I was your age, gave me this, and actually beat it into me because I probably wouldn't have listened, that this is how you become successful. That road to success is always just not a nice path with roses on it. Sometimes you get stuck on a thorn, don't you? I may have gotten stuck with a thorn before. I have. Yes. Learning from adversity and defeat. The habit of learning from adversity and defeat and making gradual improvements because of those experiences. We all learn from adversity and defeat. It just doesn't go smooth all the time. And when we learn, we can make an adjustment. We make that adjustment that allows us to move forward again. I'll tell you a story. It, didn't, it wasn't that long. It was probably 15 years ago. Years ago in the old days, horse and buggy days, and right after that, cars. <laughs> cars always used to have a hubcap where you couldn't see the brakes or you couldn't see the rotors. So I was driving a company car and I drove probably about 25 miles and pulled in and kind of looked down. I saw a groove in, this, in the rotor, which is where your brakes go into. I thought, what is that? And, I, and you know what I did? I reached down and I felt that groove. You know what happened? It was hot. My finger was burnt. But you know what? I learned I have never done that again. <laughs> That's learning from adversity and defeat. Failure is an event. It's not a person. Don't ever get to thinking that you're a failure. It is a one-time thing that happens to you that you fail at this. Then you go on. You may have a second failure, but you know what? That's not your life. It is an event. That's Zig Ziglar says. It's an event. It's not a person. Everyone faces adversity. Everyone faces defeat. But you know what? You're not a failure till you go, I quit. I'm done. I can't. In the Marine Corps, when, we used to, when they used to ask something, if you said, I can't, you know what? First of all, they whacked you. Second of all, can't means I won't. You can. Edison failed 10,000 times before he perfected the light bulb. Every defeat, disappointment, and adversity carries with it the seed of a greater or equivalent benefit. What does that mean? Who can tell me what that means? That last line. Anybody? Yes, every defeat will make you a little bit better and also you learn something, right? So there's a seed of an equivalent benefit in there. Huh, this didn't work. I'm going to shift this over here and do this. Yes, thank you. When you do feel bad, when you get to feeling down, I want you to do this right now. Everybody stand up. See this? For six seconds, breathe in. Hold it. Six seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> Breathe out for six seconds. Now I can tell which one of you guys has been smoking. So <laughs> Breathe in. Breathe out. What then? Move on. Sit down. Thank you all. Creative vision. It's the habit of visualizing things and that you want most and the actions you will take to acquire them. It takes a while. Sooner you start saving things. I'll tell you, as soon as you start saving money, you can get something into that. And I'm, you'll have my email if you got questions. You can email me something. Now don't email me if Coach Hatterman is making me run laps. <laughs> got no control over that. Synthetic imagination is this. Having previously recognized ideas and making something out of them. For instance, the new way to do a light bulb. They had a, they had a filament in there, but it would burn out real quick. So they moved on to making it out of tungsten. They moved on to making it out of something else. That's synthetic imagination. Creative imagination is based on a wholly new idea. 
Anybody, and, and this is probably older than you guys, anybody remember Woolworths, Five and Dime? Before there was Kmart, anybody know Kmart? Before there was Walmart, there was Woolworths. And Woolworth decided he was going to take these things and put them out and sell them for five cents and ten cents. And that's how his store got started. That was creative imagination, starting from, from the start. Your mind is constantly thinking, channel in the right direction. You've got to keep yourself healthy by eating right, having physical exercise, taking time for recreation, and also taking time for rest. Eating, exercise, recreation, rest. Your, mind, your body and mind are one. You are in effectively a mind-body. You can't do one without the other. When you start thinking health conscious, you start eating better. When you start thinking health conscious, you might exercise. When you start thinking success conscious, you do better on your studies. You put in a little bit more, you go the extra mile. Your bo mind body is in turn one with nature. Budgeting of time and money. Every day is to move closer to your definite major purpose and saving money to ensure steady financial growth. Once you get out of college, look at the avenues that you need to start saving at. And sometimes it's very hard because you got student loans, you're just starting a job, you don't have a lot of money put away. But every time you can save that little bit, you're going to do well. A doer and a drifter. A doer is success conscious. In their occupation, mental habits, relationships, health, religion, and spare time. A drifter has no goals, has no plans, waste times, not healthy in their body or their mind. They put in junk. They watch stuff on TV. They watch stuff on the internet they shouldn't be watching. It does you no good. Put in something good. Your mind is like a garden. If we take a patch of ground, 20 by 20, and we plant tomatoes in there, what are we going to get? If we plant dandelions in there, what are we going to get? What your mind gets planted in it is what grows. But you have to, if you plant those tomatoes and just leave them, no good. You got to what? Water them? You got to give them some fertilizer? You got to weed them? Your mind is just like that. You plant stuff in your mind, keep educating it by looking at the good things. Keep fertilizing it by putting good things in there. Keep your body healthy so your mind is healthy. Your mind doesn't differentiate what you put in it. It gives back what you put in it. Eight hours for sleep, eight hours for work, and eight hours for spare time in school and whatever. What's the difference between, what do we have in common with Bill Gates, one of the richest men in the world? What do we have in common with him? We all get what? 24 hours in a day. Your attitude towards life determines your altitude. That's Zig Ziglar. Your attitude in life determines where you're going to end up, where you're going to be. Precious resource is this, time. Don't waste it. We come to the end of my program. Are, is everybody glad? No. Is everybody sad? Yeah. Everybody, I don't care. The habit of repeating desirable thoughts and patterns and behaviors until they become effortless. It's that simple. I, I want you to take that away from here. It's that simple. I want you to look at that. Now, some of you may walk out here and go, boy, he is really full of it. He doesn't know what's going on. I do know what's going on. All your successes and failures are all the habits that you've been led to. It takes a habit to replace a habit. Tom Ziegler, one of my mentors that I learned from in uh, Ziegler headquarters in Plano, Texas, says, the quickest way to success is to replace a bad habit with a good habit. If you drink five diet sodas a day, or five sodas a day, drink three. You've cut down two. Replace a bad habit with a good habit. When you stop being what you are, you will start becoming what you will be. Think about that. When you stop being what you are, 
you will start becoming what you will be. That's Kevin Carter. And I'll, I'll give Allison this too so she can have this for you guys. Just a little bit better. One instead of two. Healthy instead of unhealthy. Baked instead of fried. Read instead of TV. Walk instead of fit. BAM! BAM stands for this. Zig Ziglar was a guy about five foot seven, five foot eight maybe. At one time he weighed over 230 pounds. He was very unhealthy. He became one of the most successful motivational speakers there is in the world. 40 books written, 40 different languages. I am one, and I, was, I did not know this till the other day when I was talking to Tom Ziglar. I am one of 250 Ziglar certified speakers in the world. Not the United States, in the world. In my class, when I went to Ziglar's, there was two people from South Africa, one from England, one from Poland. I don't even remember, a couple others and the rest of us for the United States, 23 in the class. I'm very proud to have gotten that. Bam, is this. When Ziglar started, Zig Ziglar started exercising, he could only walk a block. One block. The next day, he walked a block and a mailbox. And he called it BAM. First day, a block. Second day, a block and a mailbox. Third day, a block and two mailboxes. That's how Zig Ziglar became in shape. A block and a mailbox. Take it one step at a time. Do it now because I'll tell you what. Upon the plains of hesitation bleach the bones of countless millions who on the threshold of victory sat down to wait. And waiting, they died. Take that first step when you leave here on your way to that success. Hurricanes, earthquakes, and termites. Oh my! You know, that kind of comes from, where do I get that from? Wizard of Oz, what'd they say? Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Well, Zig Ziglar said this, hurricanes and earthquakes get all the publicity, but termites do more damage, and they take such little bitty bites. Take your little bitty bite every single day. And pretty soon, a lot of those bites add up to a whole meal that you've had on your way to success. Having a positive mental attitude? Now, my whole house is great. I can do anything good. I make my school and I like anything. I like my dad. I like my cousins. I like my aunts. I like my outfits. Hey, you get up tomorrow morning and say that in the mirror. Your whole attitude changes. Look, I see smiles. I finally, everybody's starting to smile now. I love that. Thank you, guys. Just two more things I want to tell you. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Now, Allison didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to do this. Just, I want to share this with you. You might not know a little bit about your coach, but your coach was a very good ball player. In 1997 was the year she graduated from Eureka College, the same college that President Ronald Reagan graduated from. And she was voted into the Sports Hall of Fame her first year after five years. So a few things about that. In 1997, she led the team with home runs. In 1995, she had total bases of 61. In 96, 70. In 97, 72 total bases. Uh, led the team. 
Games played. Number one, 40 games in 1994. She played in every one of them. In 1997, she played in 39 games. You can see these marks here. At bats, she's number one in at bats. She, she graduated in 97. This is 2018. Nobody's beat these. Those they have, she's a little bit, I'll tell you where she's at. She's number one in games played. Number one in at bats in 1994. So we're talking quite a number of years. She's fifth on the list from 96 at 126 at bats. She's 10th on the list in 97, 120. So she's three of the top 11 at Eureka College ever. Runs batted in, she's number five in 1997 with 33 runs batted in. Number 10 in 1996 with 32 runs batted in. She had 51 hits in 96. She's number five on that list. In 94, she was number nine with 48. In 95, her batting average was 381. Is that good? At bats, in 96, she had 126 at bats. In 95, 113 at bats. In 94, 136 at bats. In hits, she leads for, the, for her career. She's number one in the college. 184 hits throughout her career. Batting average of 371 with a minimum of 100 at bats. Stolen bases, she's fifth with 32 stolen bases in, 19, in her old career. You've got a coach that has played the game. You've got a coach that knows what to do. I'm not telling you that because that's my daughter. I'm telling you that because of what she's accomplished. And when she was younger, she had to do a lot of push-ups when she misbehaved. She, didn't get, she got a few spankings, but mostly push-ups. Because she's got three sisters. And they, when they got in trouble, drop down and give me some push-ups. So that's what they had to go through. So I want to give you these handouts. Would you help me, please? Would you hand out one to everybody? I want to give you these books. I tell you what, these are going to change your... May I grab some of these, will you? These are going to change your life. Everybody get a handout. And here's the book. Grab them. Thank you. Oh, you guys are so welcome. I'm so glad you were here. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Who else we got here? You ready? Keep that smile up, girl. Has everybody got one? Who, who's missing? One left. Up oh, more? Raise your hand if you're missing one. Two more over there? Okay. Take a quick look. Inside the book, you'll see the 17 principles are in there. Oh, my. So before you go, we're done with the program, but...